Hello, rock and roll daycare community. Happy Tuesday. It's Barb and we are here for our Tuesday training tools. I hope everyone's having a great week as always. And we are here today to discuss our monthly theme, which is presentation of the lesson materials. We, uh, we started April talking about how we're prepping those materials, making sure that we're ready for them. Um, I mean, the children are ready for the materials. And, um, and then we, you know, we went into just making sure, like kind of going through our forecasting checklist, making sure we're really thinking about this, this lesson from every angle to make sure that we can be present in the lesson. Um, and this week we're gonna talk about engaging those learners. You know, sometimes you can set up the most beautiful material. You can think you have all your forecasting questions right. And then you sit back and observe and you just realize the children really aren't into this lesson right now. Now, what do I do? And at this point, and I know it happens a lot and it can feel devastating as a teacher when you are excited about a lesson or excited about the way you prepare the environment and it can feel a little frustrating and discouraging when you're just looking at it and thinking, you know, they're just not clicking. There's something here that, I don't know, something's not making sense. And that, and that does happen and it should happen. You know, we can't expect that our classrooms are always gonna have this really nice rhythm or cycle. Um, that's our job as the guides to sit back, observe, and, and then, you know, adjust what's necessary. Going back to last month's theme when we talked about um, observing, reflecting, and adjusting. So when we're noticing this, um, I wanted to just give some really simple reminders about our lesson presentations, um, because I think sometimes it can feel really overwhelming, and sometimes I think we look at it as our job to deliver the information to the children and that's how they learn. So if they're gonna learn colors, I'm gonna present colors by pointing to all the colors and that's how they'll learn. But also remember that it is all in the materials. So think of yourself as here are the materials and here I am and I'm gonna connect the children to the materials. I, I guide them to the materials and I connect them. That connection can be a lesson to show them how that you know, how that material works, what the purpose of that lesson is, and, um, and, and, you know, what that, you know, what that really means. Okay. So when you're doing that, when you have that connection, you know, you're making that connection from, with the child to the material, um, I want you to just keep in mind the following. First, I want you to remember that it's almost like an act, so if you like to act or if you're an actor, I think this is like a really great opportunity for you to shine, to think of it like, how can I get this child excited about what I want to teach them? Um, you know, if you think about when you go out to dinner and you sit down and there's a really extensive menu and it can be really overwhelming when you're looking at that memory, I mean, that, that menu, but then if you have like a really great waiter or waitress that kind of walks you through that, that menu or tells you about the specials or, you know, really engages you as the person, um, as the customer, it becomes an experience. And we want to do that for, um, for the lessons with our children. So think of it as like, we, we want to, again, we want to entice them. We want to, you know, we want to invite them in that kind of a creative way, not, not to say, it's time to find a work or let me show you this. Um, we don't want to be a demand. We don't want to be forced. We want to kind of step back, know the child's learning styles, know the personality, and then approach it with that knowledge. Um, so I can't really sit here and say, this is how you do a lesson. This is what you should say, because that's really dependent on the child that you are working with or the group of children that you're working with there's a lot of different dynamics that go into place. Maybe you have to be really high energy to get their attention and they're a high energy group and you, you know, you feel like you, that's a way that you jive or maybe they're kind of shy and, you know, timid. And if you were to be really high energy, whoa, that would kind of, that would set them back. So you meet them where they are. Okay. But feel that out, feel that that's like a dance and, and respect that and know that it's going to look different for every child or every small group or every large group that you have. Um, it's always gonna be changing, but it starts with that observation, just like everything. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is make sure you're having fun. It's hard with all our PPE and the math 
us to like really show the children that we are excited and that we are smiling. I think there are ways that our body language can show this. I do think, you know, past the mask, our eyes can show that we're smiling and they'll get to know our body language to know that we're happy and, you know, relaxed and excited to be with them. Um, children like that. They want to know like that you're happy to be with them. So make sure you're making effort during the, the lesson that you're showing that joy and it's not all business and I'm doing a lesson and you need to listen to me and this is the way it works. No, like I'm excited to be here. And sometimes to show that you're just modeling the lesson next to them. So it can literally take no words. So I know some of our more uh, teachers who have been here longer may be smiling at this point because I've actually done a video that says not to talk at all. <laughs> and I, I remember the feedback and, and people, you know, kind of chuckling at that idea of like, what do you mean don't talk? But really limit your words, slow down. And when you think you've thought you've slowed down enough, slow down even more. Okay. And use your body language, exaggerated movements to give the lesson. And remember that that's you being slow and purposeful with your movements and exaggerating those movements. That's the anchor that's going to hold that lesson together, that group lesson, that individual lesson, whatever it is. Because when you slow down, the child is watching you. So if you are rushing through a lesson or if you're talking really fast, they could just be hearing duh, 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 because it's just a lot coming at them. So slow it down and really just try to pause, show joy and just be there with them, okay? Making eye, t eye contact to make sure they're engaged. Maybe you're assuming they're engaged, but they're looking right past you out the door, you know, out the window to the traffic, and then they're not paying attention to anything you're doing. Make sure there's that eye contact and that connection. And always remember, because I think it can be hard. I think we, we have this, um, this idea of like immediate gratification that, or just like this, this idea like, okay, I tried this lesson. They didn't like it. It's over. Give it some time. Remember repetition and trying things in a different angle can be really, really useful um, with, with our toddlers and preschoolers because sometimes maybe they're not interested that, that first time, but don't, you know, make sure you're putting that time and effort into the repetition to see, you know, what the outcome will be um, if you try it again. Um, and then it's specific with our infants, because a lot of that can be applied with our infants, especially our slow movements, especially that connection we want to be making with them in terms of if we're bringing them a toy or showing them something new or doing some type of activity with them, we're slow with our infants, okay? But also remember the way we can set up things in our infant classroom, we can, you know, kind of set it that like, if you have a child who's sitting up and they're engaging with a learning material, know that you can kind of like push that learning material a little further so they have to reach for it a little more. And remember that that struggle that a child has in an infant uh, lesson presentation, that struggle is essential. <laughs> so uh, we, we want to be setting up and um, contriving situations that are it's allowing for that, that little extra challenge in those infant, um, infant presentation, uh, lesson presentations as well. There's a lot of thought that even goes in behind, you know, that preparation for our youngest learners, which I just think is so, so amazing that we can just, all these little fine tuned details can um, really make a world of difference when we're presenting it. Okay. So that's all. I'm going to kind of keep it simple this week and just, you know, just remind you, have fun, show the child joy, slow down. And then when you slow down, slow down even further. <laughs> It is probably the hardest thing you can do as a teacher because you have so many children. So you feel like you can't slow down because you're always paying attention. So this goes back to last week and the week before what we covered, making sure you are prepared. Being part of that preparation is talking to your co-teachers for the, that, that day to say, hey, listen, I wanna give this lesson to either one child or a small group of children, depending if it's COVID safe, but again, 
you know, just in general. So then they can say, okay, and during this time, I'll make sure that I am, there is, you know, managing the class so you can be present in that lesson. That's part of the prep. So then when you get to this point of actually, pre, you know, doing the lesson presentation, that's all taken care of. And you can then focus on slowing down and not multitasking. You can focus on, you know, the words you're using and the expressions and your exaggerated movements and really engaging that learner. So they are like, I love this. This is so cool. And to have fun. And if <laughs> really at the end of the day, if you're like, I'm not having fun with these lessons, then let's have a discussion with your director, your program specialist, myself and say, what can we do to make sure you're having fun? Because you have that power to, to develop your curriculum and your lessons. So really you should be so engaged with it yourself because you've created it, that that should be, you know, that should be a priority. And if, you know, cause if you're not enjoying the lesson or if you don't think it's meaningful, it's certainly not going to be meaningful to, to the child either. So make sure you're having fun with it. And, um, and yeah. And then again, stepping back to observe, what is the child t telling you? Give it time, give it space, put trust in the child, put trust in the philosophy and put trust in yourself. And I promise you, if you do that and you do that on repeat and on repeat and on repeat, and you share those reflections with your team, you are going to gain more knowledge about the child, about the philosophy, our philosophy and about yourself. And that all comes within engaging our learner and the lesson presentation. Okay, so have fun with that this week. Again, always share with your co-teachers and your um, and your your program specialists or center directors. And know I'm always available as well. I love reading the responses <laughs> to your Tuesday training tools, and I read every single one. And I appreciate all the work you put in. So um, just know that we're here to support you, and we're we want to see you, you know, stepping out of that comfort zone, trying new things, and and having fun and enjoying what you do. That's the goal. Okay. So have a great week. We'll be back next week um, for our final week of our, our monthly theme of uh, lesson presentations. And, um, and then we'll be wrapping up April already. How crazy is that? Unbelievable. But have a great week and I will see you next week on Tuesday Training Tools. Bye everyone.